All right, so if something has four domains, it's going to have tetrahedral electron geometry. And, that, and that, the angles for those are going to always be 109.5 or a little bit less, depending on how many lone pairs there are on the central atom. So in, for CH4, there's no lone pairs. There's just four domains. And you get what's called a tetrahedron or tetrahedral electron geometry. And what that basically means, if you need to visualize this, is you can picture it as sort of a tripod. So the carbon is sort of at the apex of this tripod, and the hydrogen is directly above it. All right? And when you do that, you create something which the angles from the HCH bond for all, all HCH bonds are all the same. They're 109.5 degrees. Now, this is going to end up being a nonpolar molecule. As long as all four substituents around the central carbon atom are exactly the same. If they're not, that's not going to be true. So if you have like C and there's a BR here and, the, and then you got Fs around here. Now, I'm being lazy about dots, by the way. Okay, in this case, the vectors are not going to cancel each other out. Now, in, in 10th grade, when you were taking like the regions, you might get a molecule like this with the F right here. And they'd say, look, it's symmetric like that. And oh, yeah, it's a nonpolar molecule. And I teach that when I'm doing the 10th graders. The reality is, okay, they're not a crisscross. That's not what the shape is at all. However, they do cross each other out in terms of the vector forces. And so the overall... All the vectors cancel each other out. So you end up with a nonpolar molecule, which has polar covalent bonds. Now for PCL3, you're going to end up with, you have three uh, bonding domains and one lone pair. And I forgot to mention what these wedges and dashes are, so I said get that out of the way. Uh, if you see a structure like this with like the, the CH4, see the, the C's and the H's here? They're on the plane. They're like on the whiteboard right now. This H right here with the little wedge right there, that thing's in front of the board. And this dashy one, it's behind the board. It's a way of drawing three-dimensional shapes, okay, in a two-dimensional piece of paper, all right? So when I look at that, I see a tripod with a carbon with a hydrogen sticking straight up. The th the, the, this, these three guys are all on the board. This is in front of the board, and this is behind the board, and that's the tripod. All right. So for PCL3, you have the same tetrahedral electron geometry, but you have this one lone pair. And again, lone pairs tend to repel a little bit more. Right? So now you have a tripod. Now this is called trigonal pyramidal. And the reason why it's called trigonal pyramidal is if you can picture it, you can picture the phosphorus is at the apex of a pyramid, a pyramid with three sides. And at the vertices or the corners at the base of the pyramid would be the three CLs. And that gives you a trigonal pyramid. Now, in this case, the individual bond polarities do not cancel each other out. And so we end up with a polar molecule. And since chlorine has a higher electronegativity than phosphorus, this side of the molecule becomes negative, and the phosphorus side becomes positive. Okay? Water, okay, is a polar molecule. It has two bonding domains and two lone pairs, and it's bent. And the bond polarities are both pointing towards the oxygen, making the oxygen negative and the hydrogen's positive. And that's why water molecules are sticky and they have adhesion and cohesion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I'm not going over the hybridization, but I really want to get into one other thing. While we're dealing with things with four domains, let's talk about a polyatomic ion. Let's talk about sulfate. All right. Now, some people, when they were doing the original Simon and Lewis dot diagrams, they Googled the Lewis dot structure. Now, if you do a Lewis dot structure without Googling it, you'll find that you can make this one right here. And, you know, this is a correct structure based upon without any extra information, right? However, when you Google the Lewis structure and you don't make it from scratch, you'll find that the structure you end up with is this, okay? You end up with an oxygen here with two bonds, okay? And another oxygen, erase, draw with uh, two bonds, and this is your structure. And this, this so illustrates the idea of resonance. So the, that second bond, this pi, these two pi bonds are delocalized. And so what ends up happening is you have basically, you don't have two single bonds and two double bonds. You essentially have four one and a half bonds. And you can think of this taking all the bonds in the diagram and dividing it by the positions where the bonds are located. There's four places where bonds are located. This is called the bond order, okay? 
Now, in order to determine a structure like this, okay, there's lots of ways they could figure it out. They could tell you the bond lengths are approximately not what a single bond is, not what a double bond is, they're halfway in between, or the bond enthalpies would be halfway in between. But you probably couldn't come up with the structure on your own without Googling it, all right? And the AP would not expect you to do that. A couple of things about this. First, I expect you to be able to figure out bond order and recognize resonance. These double bonds can be in different, right? And what that resonance really means is that the second bonds are not really in one position. They're sort of moving, okay? They're, de they're delocalized, they say. So you get a bond order of 1.5. The other thing is, for a molecule like this, you would never bother with... Uh, figure out whether it's polar or nonpolar. This is a polyatomic ion. It's not even a molecule, right? I shouldn't have used that term, right? Polyatomic molecules, okay, have a whole charge, like negative two or negative three or positive one or something like that. And a whole charge is so much stronger than a partial charge. A partial charge is really a fractional charge. It's like plus 0.05 or minus 0.01, right? And that's a fraction of a whole number, right? So you would, so when you're doing polyatomic ions on the sheet, do not bother with partial charges. Do not bother with whether the bonds are polar or whether it's a polar molecule. It does not apply to polyatomic ions, all right? And don't Google things because, you know, when you get the AP, you're not going to be able to do that.